YouTube. In today's video we're going to replace this old aging hard drive with an SSD. Yes, this is not in chronological order. I have already replaced the uh, existing hard drive from this PowerBook with an SSD. I bought a 2.5 uh, inch IDE to, uh, or actually it's an M.2 SATA to 44 pin IDE converter. I'll uh, link it in the description which one I bought so you can get one for yourself. And these drives here are the uh, drives that these machines came with. This is not the original drive because I noticed here in the timestamp here, or date stamp, that it is from March 2006. And this machine is from 2003. So there's definitely a mismatch there. So this drive has been replaced at some point in its life. Either, uh, you know, during its warranty period or maybe it's been done by an official Apple technician, who knows. I couldn't find any traces inside of the machine that this was actually ever opened or tampered with. So uh, it was probably done by Apple or at least someone who knows what they're doing. Uh, in the clips that you'll be seeing shortly, you'll definitely see someone who does not always know what he's doing. In fact, I completely replaced this uh, drive from memory. I didn't actually look up any guides, so I just uh, went with it. And uh, Some things went well, some things went uh, less well. I'll go over that once uh, you've seen the entire upgrade process. There was some slight damage done uh, one of the screws or one of the clips that holds the top case in place. In fact, I'll uh, show you right there. It's actually here. This is ever so slightly outward. You can't you can't tell unless you're literally looking at uh, at the back side of the machine. But uh, I repaired that as best as I could. Just needed to bend it inwards a little bit more. Then I could get the screw back in, and it was fine. Same goes for the battery compartment. One of the screws wouldn't go in initially, but if you like compress the bottom case and the top case just a little bit, you can put the screw in just fine. But I just uh, skipped over that in the video just uh, to get the process done as quickly as possible. And uh, I'm very pleased to uh, say that the upgrade was successful. The SSD is working fine. I've installed macOS Leopard uh, on it again, and uh, it's working just fine. But uh, without further ado, let's get into the upgrade process and uh, then we'll take a look at the machine running and uh, booting up into OS X Leopard.
think we're good to go now. So let's boot her up. Also, one thing that I'm not terribly happy to announce, but uh, the bottom little RAM slot on this machine has in fact broken by removing that memory module. It will not detect any kind of memory anymore, so yeah, definitely rip in pieces. But uh, again, like I said, it's a very common fault with these older PowerBooks. As the solder really ages on these, uh, it just breaks at some point, and uh, the connection to the motherboard is lost. So uh, yeah, the only real fix is to get the board out and resolder the memory slot, and then it'll work fine. But I don't know how to solder, and I'm not gonna bother with that. And uh, one gig of RAM is definitely enough to uh, run OS 10 Leopard on a machine like this. Two gigs would be nice, but you know it's fine. So here we are. We finished booting up because I've always hidden the dock here. I've set it up uh, already. I've got all kinds of software on here. Like you can see here, we still have the 1.25 gigahertz PowerPC G4 and a gig of RAM. So all that is fine. Now let's bring up uh, disk utility. Spotlight is not that great yet in this version. As you can see here, we have a 120 gigabyte light on SSD. It's called Macintosh SSD. And it's working just fine. For instance, we can open up Word. We can open up uh, WebKit, which is a replacement for Safari with, with some better features. Even loading web pages isn't all that bad, even with just a 54 megabit Wi-Fi card and it's just a 1.25 gigahertz processor. That's really all they can load on the Apple website. There we go. Let's go to another bloated website, CNN.com. That was a good browser test. By no means great, but it's functional. There we go. Obviously, no scrolling. No, no, that's working fine. Just need to be patient a little bit. Just like we were in 2008. Also a really nice utility. I definitely recommend this for anyone anyone else who's actually running a PowerPC Mac still. Let me get to the programs here. Because it is called the PPC App Store. It's right here. And it's just a very nice little download tool with all kinds of uh, handy utilities here. Install some Office, CyberDuck for web dev client, FileZilla, different internet tools like browsers, Dropbox, which doesn't work anymore, by the way, so don't install that. MacTubes doesn't work anymore either, but you know, some torrent clients, TeamViewer, even. All kinds of older versions that uh, should still work on PowerPC Max. A lot of these haven't been updated for years, so some might not work anymore, but. You know, it's definitely something. I certainly enjoyed uh, installing some uh, software from there. Another very handy utility to always install on a PowerPC mic like this is G4 Fan Control, which will allow you to uh, control the fans, obviously. This works on iBook G4s and PowerBook G4s. And uh, it's good to keep your machine cool. But uh, other than that, there's really not all that much to show here. It's just an upgrade well done. I think uh, the machine has been definitely a bit snappier in terms of overall usage. Loading up programs is definitely a lot zippier than it was. And it's of course whisper quiet now, you don't have to hear the rattle of a disk anymore. 
And in the end, it should be more reliable too. The only thing you're really missing out on is trim. But uh, I'm not going to use this machine on a daily basis if it doesn't bug me too much. But other than that, it's absolutely fine. I definitely enjoy this machine a hell of a lot more now that I don't have to actually worry about having to remove a faulty hard drive anymore. So yeah, these things really don't have... Uh, they really don't live forever. You just have to replace them at some point. When they break, it's just all kinds of messy. Because you've seen how much of a disassembly is required to get to the drive. It's not all that bad. It's definitely worse on newer Macs, but it's still quite an involved process. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, upgrade well done. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.